welcome to this second video on Carve by After Later Audio. In this video, we'll dive a little bit deeper into a few more patch tips and more creative uses you can get out of Carve. You can jump to any section of the video using the time codes now. And let's get started. First, let's look at making a gated LFO with Carve. And I'm doing that in addition to using channel one is the VCA and envelope for my synth voice. I just have an oscillator plugged into the VCA and my gate is plugged into the in trig with it set to in. And the VCA out is going into my output. Now I can adjust the attack time of my envelope, the release, adjust the shape. But for this case, I'm going to give it a slightly longer release. And I'm doing that because I have my gate molted and in going into the very top input on G and T by After Later Audio. And then I have the bottom out gate output releasing a gate Anytime I release my keyboard key. And that's going to go into the in. And this is going to provide our gate for our LFO, which I have looping right here in unipolar mode. And we're going to do that by plugging the out of channel 2 into the VCA of channel 3. And that way it mixes the VCA input with our envelope to give us our VCA output. And I say envelope because we can adjust our attack and release times of this gate. So I'm going to plug that output into the pitch CV of my oscillator. So you could hear we get a little pitch wobble for more exaggeration. And I can adjust the gate length on G and T to longer or shorter, just to give us a little flutter. And that is how we get our gated LFO with just channels two and three, or our enveloped LFO with using the attack and release time higher up. Let's hear this with a little sequence. LFO and a VCA and an envelope with Carve and we still have channel 4 open. Now let's look at something that I've already looked at on maths but we could do it also on Carve is dynamic volt per octave slewing. First I'm going to plug volt per octave into the in trig set to in on channel 1. Turn the output all the way up and then I'm going to send the out into my volt per octave of my oscillator. So you can see our sequence going now. So you see we have no slew right now because the attack and release are all the way down. We could turn them up and get that slew. 
but the more proper slew is logarithmic, so it stays at that end note, or closer to the, that end note, longer. And this is how we just get slew to either just the attacks, or just the release, or a mix of both. But we want it more dynamic, so what we want to do is turn these down until we just don't hear the slew anymore. So about there. And what we're going to do is take our output from channel 2 and put it into, say, the release here. And I could turn channel 2 on. And we can see it's giving us some really weird slew here. We want something that's more actionable. So what I'm going to do is take the random gate from steps and put that into the input on channel 2. And now I'm going to take this out again on channel 2 and plug that into... We'll do the attack this time. Turn that off. So we can see our random gates we're getting. And we're getting that slew on the attack. Or we could get it on the release. And now what's nice about this is we could give it that envelope and we could adjust the amount here to really control the amount of slew we want to give it. And if we want to control the attack, we control that separately with a different channel of carve. Or we could just use a splitter for this output into the attack. That is Dynamic Slew with Carve. Now we'll look at Carve being used as what I will call a complex mixer. For this, I'm using a chord oscillator, a qubit chord, and I have the four outputs going into the VCA inputs on Carve. You'll see I'm only using the last VCA output because all the outputs will normal down to the last one in a mix. So we could hear, if I give it a gate, we're gonna hear our tone here. From our first oscillator, here's our last one, but we can't do that with these middle two. But that's where things get interesting and what makes this a complex mixer is so we can mix different LFO rates here to give complex evolving sounds. And I'm going to turn our bass tone just on constant. Now I'm patching this out into an external VCA right now, which I will turn down the output. And now when we play our sequence, we could get our nice envelope tied to our sequence and then have this nice modulation with their sound. And we can modulate at audio rates. Or super long, or anything in between. But for this, I'm gonna leave this at the five volts, just for that bass tone. Now, if we wanted to just use this as a mixer, I'm going to turn all these off right now. What we can do is utilize our 10 volts and our 5 volts here and pull the output from that and bring it into the input on that channel and do the same thing with channels 4 to 3. And now we just turn these volumes all the way up now or higher up, rather, because they're getting that attenuated signal because these knobs are down a little bit. And now we have a nice four-channel mix of our oscillators. But that's not as exciting, so we'll pull that out. And then we can also play with the shape to get more interesting sounds.
Okay, there's some beats for fun. And that is carved as a complex mixer. Now we'll look at using Carve as a quad envelope VCA. Now I'm going to send four oscillator signals from cubic cord into each of the VCA inputs. And since the VCA outputs cascade, we only have to plug into the last VCA output to get a mix. So if you see if I turn on our main note and then I could turn on our last note here, we could hear the gist of the sequence but we want to generate those envelopes. Now there's two routes we could go with this, and the first of which is gonna be using a mult on our gate sequence. In this case, I'm using the IntelliGel palette case mult, and just sending the gate to each input. individual envelopes we just play with the attack and release and our shape but that's not as much fun another thing we could do is flick some of them to trigger plug into this trigger or we could do something entirely different in this case I'm gonna plug directly from the sequencer into our in trigger here and for ease of it recognizing the rise and fall because we're gonna use the rise and fall outputs here I'm gonna switch our channel 1 and 4 here to trigger First thing we want to do is probably have our rise trigger triggering channel 4 so we could activate those triggers sooner. Now here's where things get more fun. So we could plug from our fall output here to trigger, say, the trigger input on channel 2. First one, a little shorter attack time. And now we're going to do the same, where I'm going to plug the fall into the trigger input of channel 3. And now each channel is firing at a slightly different time, all from one trigger input. things up a little bit more by plugging this output into another VCA, open it up, which I have right now, and then send some negative voltage into the CV to give a nice sidechain compression sound. in here for fun. And that is Quad Envelope VCA with Carve. Now we'll look at full wave rectification with Carve. Now it's a little overcomplicated, but we get interesting controls over it.
So to start, I'm going to plug our oscillator into the oscilloscope so you can see our base wave. And now I'll plug it into the in on channel one of carve. I'm going to plug the VCA out into the input here. Now to do this, we're going to do half wave rectification twice, where channel one does rectification of the negative half of the wave. And channel two, three, and four do it on the positive half. So I'm going to pull 10 volts from channel four and put it into the VCA input here. And I'm going to turn that all the way up. And we can see we have the negative portion of our wave. And I could flip that positive by just flipping our attenuator on channel four here. And we get the opposite wave portion when flipping this attenuator. So we want it fully clockwise here. Now we want to molt this output here. And plug this into channel three, and I'm just going to use this to invert the signal. I'm going to take this out and plug it into VCA2. And I have a molt of this oscillator going into channel 2's in. Now I'm going to plug into the VCA for channel 2. And you see when I have it fully negative, so I have our signal inverted here from channel 3 going into channel 2 here, and we have full wave rectification with this fully negative here. And if I go positive, we have our regular wave. And that is quick full wave rectification. It does use all four channels of carve, but you get some interesting controls over all of these, especially if we oscillated this. And that is full wave rectification on carve. And that's all for this video. See you next time.